Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to personalize envelopes. Using your Brother Scan and Cut CM350 or Scan and Cut 2 and the STX125. I will show you how to create several different colors of personalized envelopes in different size fonts. We're going to be using the fonts that are built into your machine, but you'll still learn several skills such as creating outlines of the font, filling in the font with a solid pattern, and I'll even point out how to change the pattern fill, and how to load and unload markers into the universal pen holder tool. We're not gonna be working with the built-in tool that came with your machine, the built-in pen holder. We are, going, we are going to be using this universal pen holder because that way we can use our Stampin' Up! markers and the different colors which coordinate with our projects perfectly because they fit into the universal pen holder. Let's get started, there's a lot to cover. And I do want you to stick around to the end because I will give you a sneak peek of some of the universal pen holder projects that I did in the course that's upcoming called Brother Scan and Cut, Working with Fonts. It's my upcoming Udemy course. All right, so here's the deal. When you get the universal pen holder, it does not come with the Brother Scan and Cut, it's an extra accessory, but it will work with the CM350 or STX. You just need one universal pen holder, even if you have multiple scan and cut machines. If you get this pen holder, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come with two parts. The two parts are the stand, this is your stand, and then this is your actual pen holder. Okay, the possibilities are endless, and if you want to get a pen holder, definitely use my link in the description. I mean, you're going to just be blown away with what you can do once you start changing up your colors. So you first have to, and I usually use a, a flat table for this. So let's move these envelopes out of the way. These are envelopes we're gonna be personalizing. Now I would usually put this on a table, but my camera is precariously placed and I, I'm just gonna just do the setup right here. So what you'll need is a piece of cardstock and the cardstock you're gonna use is gonna be, or you could use an envelope if you had, you know, extra envelope pieces. I'm not going to waste an envelope to put under there. I'm, so the idea is we're going to put that under there in the stand and we're going to be loading the pen and it's going to be touching. It's going to be touching just that paper so we know what depth to put the pen holder at. In other words, we're going to set up the pen holder so that when we replace the blade holder, this is the blade holder, with the pen, it's going to be the right in the right position. All right, so let's show you what that means. This is the pen holder and there's no little grasp in there. It's in an open position. Okay, I'm gonna, this is the open position. There's a little arrow. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like in the closed position before I even put a pen in there. You see how the pen will grasp inside there. It'll hold onto your pen really tightly. Now if you don't put, if you don't secure your pen, it would just wobble all over. And believe me, been there, done that. Everything you could do wrong with this, I have done. All right, so let's, let's just say it's in the open position. So we're gonna take our pen and all Stampin' Up! markers have a thin side and a brush side. So there's a, I'm not gonna use the brush side for writing names on the envelopes. I'm gonna be using the thin side. So we're gonna take, take the cap off and we're gonna put, now we're gonna put this, this universal pen holder into the stand, lining up the arrows, okay? There's arrows. These arrows have to line up with the arrows behind it. Okay, so you're lining up the arrows. Now you're gonna put this down and you put your little piece of paper there, the paper that's the same depth of whatever you're, you're gonna be drawing on. And I'm just holding this into the stand. I'm gonna push the pen into the holder. And I'm not gonna push it hard. I'm just gonna go tap, 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 tap. And it touches. It touches the medium I'm gonna be drawing onto. So now I can secure the pen holder. You're gonna watch me do this m several times, but so you will get more practice in different angles because I always like to reinforce the concepts. So my crafty friends get a good grasp of what's going on. So basically to lock it, it's going up and over. And now, now my pen is secure. See, it's not shaking around. So now I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take the blade out and I'm gonna replace, okay? I'm gonna replace the blade with the universal pen holder. Okay, it is that simple. Now, this is, a, this is an envelope from my paper pumpkin kit. We're gonna use this envelope to create what's called an outline. Okay, just an outline of, and I do have an example to show that show you, and I will show you this example because I'm gonna I'm gonna do many examples, and I want to show you because later I'm gonna show you what you could do when, when you actually 
use more than just what's on the machine. So this is what we're going to do. It's on the machine. We're not going to write mom. I already have one that says mom. This is for Mother's Day. I'll do one for my sister. Okay, so we'll write her name. Her name's Debbie. So that's what we're going to do. Now what I like to do when I'm working with envelopes, just so they don't slip because my mat's not super sticky, I'm doing the CM350 first. I'm just putting a couple pieces of painter's tape down for good measure because I could just use the brayer or rub it down, but envelopes are kind of delicate. So I'm just putting some painter's tape there so it sticks a little better. So the question is, you're thinking, okay, well, how does she know where to write, where to write this text? Okay, lots of skills. Like I said, there's lots of skills in this tutorial. And one of the skills that you're going to be learning about today is called background scanning. But first, I left this on on purpose. Okay, so, and let me just turn off my, my light. Okay, when, when I turned on my machine today, I saw that it needed an update. Okay, so I left that on there on purpose. So you could see this, and we're gonna do the update first. So whenever you see an eye, usually you just see that your wireless is connected. But whenever you see the eye, you click on the eye and it means there's some kind of information it's trying to tell you. It's telling us version 2.37, which is what I currently have, is going to be version 2.38. It'll automatically update, update because I'm on my network. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, go ahead and update that. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're gonna update that and I'll be right back with the, you know, with the updated version. I don't know how, what, what kind of updates were in this version, but we always go with it. Whenever brother says there's an update, you should definitely do your update. So see in a couple minutes after I update my brother scan and cut CM350. When your update is complete, it's asking you to turn off and on your machine again. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then it's gonna have to, I'm gonna have to reload my mat. And of course, I'm gonna have to connect back to the wireless network. If, if that's if I'm going to be retrieving a project, but actually it's okay because I don't need to wait for wireless to connect because I'm going to be using the built-in patterns for this entire tutorial. So we're going to pattern. When you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. We're going to pattern and we're going to use the built-in fonts. This will look a little different on your when I do this on the STX because there are more fonts installed on that one. For my CM350, I just have the, the two pages, which is just seven fonts total. The font I always like to work with when I'm making tags and writing on envelopes is the second, or it's actually the third font. It's FO-A003. I just love the way this one looks. Now here's, when you, when you type in your name, you just have to remember, I'm gonna type my sister's name, Debbie. So I'm gonna do, if I were just to start typing, it's gonna do all caps. So what I have to remember, when you go back, is to change the case. So I want the capital D, but then I'm gonna do lowercase like that. Okay, so we're gonna say okay. Now, and by, and by the way, if you wanna do letters, numbers, it's someone's birthday, you know, first birthday, symbols, there's, there's, there's all kinds of options just with the fonts built into the machine with the numbers, letters, and symbols. All right, so let's say okay. Now we're gonna set this on the mat. One thing about the CM350 is that I wanna point out is, is resizing. If I were to click on this, Debbie, and I wanted to resize it, Watch what happens when I go to the resize. Nothing. Hear the beeps? Nothing happens, okay? The SDX got a lot smarter and I'll show you that, but right now nothing happens, meaning I can't resize it where it's at in the position it's at. I need to move it to, an, to another part of the mat. In other words, it needs room to grow. It grows outward on this, on this model of machine. So when I wanna resize this font, I have to put it in the middle, or not in the middle, just away from the edge. Just, it, I just can't be next to the edge. It needs room to grow. And then I can resize it as big as I want. But I don't want it that big, maybe an inch and a half, but we're gonna see. That's the whole point of the next exercise. So for this one, we're gonna just, we're gonna just draw it like it is with the, the pretty peacock color of marker, Stampin' Up marker. We're gonna put it on the envelope. Now the question is, where is the envelope? Let's say, okay. The envelope, we're gonna background scan what's on the mat. Okay, we're gonna do this many times. So if you miss that, don't worry because I'm gonna reinforce the concepts of this tutorial several times. I have four envelopes to personalize and I've already personalized many, many before this. And so you're actually just watching me work. And in the process, you're gonna get to see, you know, these, these skills and learn them in different machines. So here's, I want this Debbie to go right there. So I really don't want it to be an inch and a half because it's a long word and I don't wanna be writing on that flap there. 
So let's go to the resize, go in here to Debbie, and we're going to click on it. And instead of maybe um, 1.25 inches high. Okay, we're going to say okay. So this is the background scan lets us position your, your font on the place you want it to draw it. Okay, or in this, or if, if you ever want to cut something, it's same thing. One of the options you have with background scanning is this little wrench. And when you click on that, you can make the background lighter and it helps you so that you can just use that envelope as an outline. Good enough is good enough. We're going to say okay and we're going to draw. Very important, we're drawing, not cutting. Okay, so when you draw, it turns blue. It's a blue color. So I'm going to just let that run. Because it's only going to take a minute, because we're only doing the outline, it's a pretty fast process. But I'm not going to move my machine right now to show you, because you never move your machine while it's drawing. Alright, so now I can move my machine and show you the, the job it did drawing. Okay, great. Now, unless you're a calligraphy expert or some kind of expert in, in working with fonts, you would never be able to draw that yourself, even with stencils. So the, the universal pen holder is just amazing. And I also have a coordinating color to use. So let's change up the color. It's going to reinforce a couple concepts. I'm going to turn back on my light. And so now you understand how to use the universal pen holder to create, to personalize an envelope and using the outline of a font. Okay, so let's take this envelope off admire our handiwork and there we have it okay so that's the example now we're going to take a note card next we're going to just take a note card i'll put it i'll put it somewhere different just so we can do the background scanning again for reinforcement put the note card over here i'm just attaching it down and we're going to write a different name on the note card so you're going to see me you're going to see me do a couple things now I'm going to work a little faster, but you're still going to get reinforcement. I'm going to take this pen out of the pen holder tool. So watch how I do this. I'm going to go lift up, turn to the right, and down. Hear that little sound? Hear that? It just it springs down. Okay, I'm going to pull this pen out, and I'm going to put this is the pretty peacock. I'm going to put the lid back on. Now I'm doing. A lot with the Tropical Oasis Suite right now. I'm going to be using Flirty Flamingo to write the name on this one. So now you're going to get to watch me change out the pen on the Universal Pen Holder and how quick and easy it really is. So you always need your little piece of paper. You always need your stand. Always need your stand. Okay. You put your arrows. Put the arrows on next to those arrows. You put the piece of paper in. You lower your marker. The, the pen holder's in the open position. Tap, tap, tap till it touches the paper. And then you lift up and twist to the left. Now my pen holder is secure. Okay, so you already know how to do that from last time, but I was just showing you again. So now I put the universal pen holder in and we're ready to write on this envelope. So now I'm gonna show you how to do, the next skill you're gonna learn is how to do a solid fill. So we're gonna go click on okay. Now we're going to go back and we're going to go to, let's go to this background scan setting and turn that off because we'll be scanning in a different envelope. We want to go to, let's just delete Debbie and we'll go and add a new word. So again, I like this font. So we're going to stick with this font and I'm going to type the word Amy, A-M-Y, but not all caps, A-M-Y. Okay, we're going to set that on the mat. We're going to go put it around that area. And I'm going to background scan, background scan, my little mini note card envelope. Get in the habit of background scanning, unless you're doing a lot of the same envelope. In that case, you just lift your tape up, replace the envelope, and keep on, keep on personalizing your envelopes. But in this case, of this tutorial, I have four different size envelopes I'm working with. So I need to background scan every time. We want Amy to be centered on the background. And good enough. And we're going to make that one, let's see. I usually go with one and a half, unless the word's real big. One and a half is going to fit for this one. Now, while I'm in here resizing, let's show you how I got there. Let me show you how I got there. We're going to, we are in the mat, we're on the mat. We are, and I can go ahead and turn the background lighter just to make it lighter. Okay, now 
we we want to take the word Amy and we want to make sure it's filled in this time. So I need to show you a visual example. The first time we did this, we did the outline fonts like this, okay? This time, we're gonna be doing a solid fill. Let me find that example. Okay, here's the example, solid fill. So now you need to watch how I do the solid fill. You go in like you're editing, you know, like you're going to edit, like you're going to resize the, the word Amy, and you're going into here, into this one, and there is a little highlighter tool. See the little highlighter tool? It looks like a, you know, a highlighter touching a square. Make sure that that is suppressed, that it's checked off, because that means that now you have a solid fill. Okay, so there's another, there's another point to this. All that's telling you is not necessarily that you have a solid fill, it's telling you that you have a fill. Okay, so a very important concept to understand at this point is, if you decide to make a fill and you fill in something, it doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily be solid. You have to go into your settings. So not only do you have to tell it to put a fill in that letters, but you have to go down to your settings and go down all the way, oop, did I pass it? I think I did. Hmm, let me keep going, maybe I didn't get to it yet. There it is, fill, I did pass it, okay. Page four of eight, fill additional line. Okay, you go into that setting, and this is where you make sure that your fill pattern is set to solid as well. So it's not enough to tell it that you need it to have a fill, you have to tell it which kind of fill. So you could fill this in with lines, with, with the, the grid pattern, or with these diagonal lines, but we want the solid fill. Okay, I teach about this at nauseum in my courses. I mean, really, I go over that so many times as troubleshooting tips and as tips. So if you didn't get all this, there'll be other opportunities to learn all this. All right, we say, okay, 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 and we draw. So now we have our flirty flamingo loaded. I will be back in two minutes to show you the result of this drawing. It's gonna take longer because it's filling in. The note card envelope is finished drawing. We use flirty flamingo on a whisper white note card envelope. That's all good, it came out nice. I'm gonna take out the universal pen holder and I'm going to lift the latch up, turn it to the right. I'm gonna pull the universal pen holder, I mean, pull the pen out, the flirty flamingo pen. And now we are done with the CM350. So you SDX users, I didn't forget about you, okay? I know there's a lot more CM350 users out there because of how long my channel's been around and I, I think a lot of you started following me back when I was using even an older model than this. But I know that a lot of my crafty friends also got STX machines for Christmas. So we have a lot of new STX users as well. The process is similar, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go over the process. And do stick around even if you have a CM350 because you're gonna get to see a sneak peek of my upcoming course on Brother Scan and Cut working with fonts. All right, so now what we're doing is we are using the STX. There's no update, it doesn't have an I, so we don't need to do any updates. We're gonna go into pattern and we're gonna click on fonts again. Now this time we have a few more fonts because I'm using an STX at 125, so click down. We have six, one, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 11 fonts built into my machine. If you paid a lot more for your machine, you got a lot more fonts. You got a lot more built-in patterns. That's just one of the perks of buying a more expensive machine. Okay, well let's just use this font here because I like this one as well. FO-A101. I'm going to use this one because I can and we're going to we're going to type the word Joan J lowercase o a n and this time I'm going to and click OK I'm going to show you something different that and I'm going to take a regular envelope just what I'm taking right now I'm taking just a whisper white envelope I'm going to put that on the mat now I want to show you something that you saw how I had to do the resizing with the CM if you go to edit resize now, I'm sorry, that was just object edit, go to object edit and this one resize with this, with this arrow, it will let you resize, okay? Oh, I don't like the way that J is. I'm gonna go change the font. It does not make you move your font into the middle of the page just to resize it. In fact, let me go, and while we're here, I'm just trashing that, I don't like that J. I'm gonna go back to the font I like and stick with the one I like which works. FO-A003. It works very well. It's always worked for me for tags, envelopes, titles on journals, etc. So we're going to set that. So bottom line, we need to do that background scan again. I put an envelope on the mat, a little bit of painter's tape to hold it down for good, for good measure. 
and we are going to I'll show you how to use the universal pen holder tool with, tool with this as well so we're going to click on background scan and we're going to click start and then I'll just show you that's just doing where I put the tape okay, I just wanted to show you where I put the tape on there now it's scanning in the envelope we're going to get out a new color I just need to make some room And I'm going to get another little piece of whisper white. So there's the word Joan. We want to center that on the envelope. And I will do this one with an outline font. Okay, so we're going to click OK. And we're going to click Draw. Now here's something else that you're going to learn. If you forget to put in the Universal Pen Holder tool or the pen holder tool that came with your computer, I mean your, your machine, then that's okay, because if you try to hit start, it's gonna say, attach the appropriate holder. I really like that. So it's gonna tell you to attach the appropriate holder. And if you forget to change the lever, it'll tell you to change the lever as well. So now that I'm using an SDX, you need to remember to not only attach the appropriate holder, the universal pen holder, I have my light on here, you need to change your, your lever here to level two. Also, this is the, you go on lever, lever two when you're, up, when you're cutting thick materials as well. So now we're going to do that same thing we did before. We're going to set up the universal pen holder. And we have our pen holder, we have our stand, we have a little piece of paper, and we have a coordinating color. So let's take um, this, this, she's getting one of the ones, it's a tropical theme. So we're going to say, I have a whole thing of Stampin' Up markers. So I'm just going to take one of the markers that coordinates with this theme. All of these markers will fit in that universal pen holder. So there's like 60 in there. So I have more than 60. I probably have 100 different markers. They will all fit in there. So I'm taking out the cap, standing up the stand. I'm set to position that's open. I'm using the same exact universal pen holder that's linked in my comments, in my description. This pen holder tool is the same one for both the SDX and the CM350. I, put the, I line up the arrows. My pen is set to the open position. I tap, tap, tap. It touches the Whisper White cardstock. I turn to the left to grasp it. It's in there, it shake it, it doesn't move. I lift out my auto blade. I put in my pen holder. Okay. I think th that'll be the last time I do, uh, no, I'm gonna do one more color change because I have a different color for the next envelope. So I always wanna coordinate with my projects. That's why I do color changes on my markers. Now, of course, if I was cutting a bunch of, or if I was drawing a bunch of envelopes at once, I wouldn't, Go th I would just retape them down. So let's click start. And it's gonna do the drawing for us and we don't wanna move our machine while it's drawing. When you personalize your envelopes, everyone's gonna know you, you went the extra mile, added touches to the crafts. They know you made something just for them. Okay, that's really nice. Let's click okay. So now, I'm going to go ahead and remove one last time. We'll take we'll take everything off. We'll take the envelope off with the painter's tape. This is a whisper white envelope and it's a little bit it's not as stark white as the next white envelope I'm going to do. Now look. This has good ink absorption. It's like a smooth finish. This whisper white envelope. Now as opposed to this envelope came out of the kit and it's made of because it's foiled, it has it's not really a smooth finish, but I like the gold inside. So I'm going to use terracotta tile to write the name with that one. Terracotta tile is another color because this goes with my seriously the best project kit. So that's why I want to use a coordinating color. So anyway, let's not digress. I'm just saying that some envelopes have better ink absorption, but you still, you know, you can write on any envelopes, but just don't expect the same level of, you know, ink absorption with every kind of medium. Let's see if that's my terracotta tile. I know that's Calypso Coral. Sometimes some of my colors look very similar. Here's my terracotta tile. So I'm going to trade out. I'm going to take this one out. Okay, watch how quick the process is. I lift up, I go to the left, I pull that pen out. Of course, I'm going to put the cap back on my pen. I put the universal pen holder stand in there. I put the piece of Whisper White cardstock in there or something that's the same size 
as the envelope. I take off the lid of the pen, tap, 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 shut the pen holder, replace it with the blade, and you can just do this all the time. And put the caps back on your markers. So you put the cap back on. Now we're gonna show you the skill you're going to learn is how to make sure that you have a solid pattern fill. And we're gonna also, we just did one with the word Joan. So now we're gonna change it to the word Gale. So let's go back and see if we can't just edit that. Uh, no, we can't edit it that way because we have to, we can't edit our text that way. We're gonna actually have to trash our text and write it again. So that's okay, go to text. Okay, we're gonna write the word Gale, lowercase a-i-l, okay, set. Um, let's see, I think I put my envelope in the same place. If not, we're gonna background scan for good measure. Because this envelope is slightly different size than the one I just used a minute ago. Okay, but my drawing tool is loaded, but I still wanna make sure I get that solid fill. That way you could totally understand how to, how to repeat everything I did today. I don't wanna leave my crafty friends hanging. Yep, it's still centered perfectly. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to edit and we're gonna to go to object edit and we're gonna still use that highlighter again and we're gonna turn on the fill. Now, if you were using, well, no, let's not even get into that. There, if you sent something from the machine to your, to your scan and cut, that's sort of just a visual indicator, but you, you could also tell your, what you send from your machine to draw. But in this case, we need to tell it to draw. We need to tell it to fill. We need to make sure the fill pattern is not set to any of these lines. So when you're working on your machine, you actually have a few more steps that you, you know, because we didn't use the software, we, are, we have to tell it to fill up with the, with the solid pattern. Because if you don't, it will not fill with a solid pattern. It will fill, it will be empty. So click okay and click okay. So now we're gonna be drawing that with a solid terracotta tile, we're gonna click on okay and we're gonna click draw. Okay, so now it's gonna take two minutes and you're gonna notice this is a lot quieter. I'm gonna not wait, make you wait the whole two minutes but this machine is much quieter than the other machine I just showed you. So it's gonna go ahead and fill this in in terracotta tile. When we come back, I will show you the result of this envelope and other envelopes I've created to go with projects that for my online course. So be right back. We finished cutting out the word Gale in terracotta tile. I took the marker out and here's what we can do with our scan and cut. You now know how to use the universal pen holder, how to use the Stampin' Up markers with your pen holder, how to do it with both machines if you have a CM model or an SDX model. But maybe you have more questions now that you saw this tutorial. You might, you, one question might be like, Paper Chef, what about this universal pen holder? Should I get it? Can I use other pens? Do I have to use Stampin' Up markers? Absolutely not. You can use other pens. Like for example, I use these pens a lot. These are from Creative Memories. I'm not even sure if that company's still around, but these are metallic pens that I use a lot. So you can use other pens. You just have to do some adaptations. I teach that, you know, as well, but I mean, I'm just letting you know, you can use other pens. Of course, they're not gonna fit directly, right? You know, they're gonna be loose. And then you have to do some, some you know, little magic tricks. I got lots of tricks up my sleeve. And then, you know, you might have another question. You might say, Paper Chef, can I use fonts from my computer to decorate with? Well, of course you can. So here's an example of a font from my computer. And this is uh, in soft suede. Can I use graphics from my computer and draw graphics using, using the universal pen holder? Of course you can. Here's some little flip flops that go along with my cards I'm gonna show you. Paper Chef, can I decorate my own envelopes that I use that I make from the envelope punch board or from the template maker you showed us how to use online. Of course you can decorate your own envelopes. It doesn't, you can decorate anything. Wedding invitations, party favors. I show you how to make boxes in the course. So here's an envelope that I made using the template maker. I also make envelopes all the time using my punch board. So of course you can decorate your own envelopes. You can decorate anything with the universal pen holder. Here's another one. This is drawing the little flip flops on the back. Okay, so I mean, I hope your wheels are spinning. The possibilities are endless. So I promised you a sneak peek of what I cover in the course. Now, one of the tutorials I've done here on YouTube is about using how to curve text with your scan and cut. So I thought, why not curve Aloha? So this is one of the projects I create in the course. 
And I'm not gonna be doing this project on YouTube because I do it in my course. I don't repeat the same projects. I might repeat the same skills, but there's always different projects in my courses. Okay, now notice I used Wink of Stella on there. And in this case, I drew this. I just need to show you this so you can get excited because you could do this right away. I used the pen tool that came with the machine. That's what I used to, to draw this with. And this little black pen that came with my machine. I didn't even use the Snap It Up marker for the Aloha. And the Wink of Stella went on there really nice. Okay, and then I did it several times, and I teach you how to do all these elements with your machine. I mean, why not cut the little jagged paper borders? Why not cut this little basket weave border? The, the card backgrounds themselves. Of course, I did use stickers from what's called the Memories and More card pack. So I used my own stickers and my own little sequins. I mean, basically, I used whatever is in my stash. Sometimes when I made mistakes, I, <laughs> I cut the card down smaller. And I'm even in the process of making all kinds of really neat inserts for the insides of these cards um, using the Memories and More card packs. So I'm going to be putting inserts in these cards using coordinating stamp sets. So I taught how to, to, do, to work with the pen holder tool as well and to layer this up. So here's some examples of that. Now my, course, my courses are several hours long. And this particular lesson on using the Universal Pen Holder tool is at least two hours long inside of my course. It's about an hour and a half maybe. I had to cut it back. But anyway, I it probably took me eight to 10 hours to film it. So a lot of work goes into this and a lot of experimentation to see exactly what size font will work. I, I explained how to get the insides of the letters cut out and, and you can see how I layered them. I have I have a layer of, of ink here with this is real red. I have a layer of Whisper White. I have a layer of another color in the back that would be um, Old Olive from the Designer Series paper. I talked about these elements as well. And then I have ones in various stages of completion. Some without the letters cut out, without the centers cut out, and then I liked it better like this. So I do a lot of experimentation. I come up with designs and I share, you, I share the measurements with you. So I hope that you'll be watching out for my new course called Brother Scan and Cut Working with Fonts. It, is, it was suggested to me by the patrons, the people who support my channel. And those, those at the silver and the gold and the platinum elite uh, status or platinum sponsorship get my courses for free. So they get to pick the topics for my courses. And they picked this topic or they came up with it through a poll and some discussion. And that's how I came up with working with fonts. Because a lot of, a lot of you are asking for, this, for that, those kinds of skills. So we will dive deep into working with fonts in my course. But this was an introduction. So this is all in my course. But this was today. <laughs> this is what you can do right now with your scan and cut. You can do all these things, all these things I showed you. Decorate your envelopes, invitations, change your colors, change it up. So thank you for watching. Feel free to comment, ask questions, and interact with this video. I'd like to hear what's on your mind. Bye for now.